At Fitch, the starting point for cover bond rating is the issuer default rating, uh, or IDR for short. And we have three reasons to assign an uplift above the IDR. First, we consider whether there is a bank resolution regime uh, of which cover bonds are exempt. And if yes, we assign a so-called IDR uplift. Second, um, we have a payment continuity uplift, or PCU. This represents the fact that even if the recourse against the cover pool is enforced, payments on the cover bonds may continue to be timely if, for instance, there is a liquidity provision that allows the refinancing of the cover pool in time. And thirdly, should timely payment fail, cover bond holders will have access to above average recoveries uh, compared to senior and secured debt holders. We reflect this via the recovery uplift. In total, we can assign up to 12 notches above uh, the bank rating, subject to applicable caps such as the country ceiling. Within the range of achievable cover bond ratings, the actual uh, assigned rating depends on the over collateralization or OC between the cover pool and the cover bonds. We stress on one hand the cover pool credit risk and on the other hand the uh, asset and liabilities mismatches in terms of maturity, interest rates and currency. We publish a break-even OC for the rating, which is the sum of the credit loss and the ALM loss, and we compare that to the OC which uh, we take into account for a given program. I'd like to highlight that the break-even OC for cover bond ratings that are achievable based on the IDR uplift and the recovery uplift is lower than if we are using PCU notches and testing the program's cash flows for timely payment. This is because we view recoveries as not time sensitive and therefore the break-even OC only incorporates the credit loss and disregards the LM loss.